the only horses I can re read about in Scripture are white. So I don't know if there's going to be other colors, but I do know there will be white ones. Amen. And uh, it'll be a blast. But there's an enemy, Satan. God could have sent him straight to hell, but he didn't. He allowed him to kind of, if you please, mess with us a bit. To try our hearts, to see if our faith in Christ, our love for God, our worship is pure and true. And so Satan deceives Adam and Eve, uh, trying to bring uh, them under his condemnation. Misery loves company. If the devil's going to hell, he wants everybody to go to hell. And so immediately God begins to unfold his plan. And God told the enemy what the plan would be veiled language in the beginning, but it got clearer and clearer as we go through the Old Testament. Satan's plan uh, was to have his kingdom on the earth, where he failed to do it in heaven, and that he will blind our minds and bring people under damnation and spend eternity with him in hell. God has a plan. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He has an individual, individual plan for you and I. Uh, he was one day Jesus Christ like the path of every man that comes to the world. John 9, one night, I just read that this morning. Jesus will come and knock on the door of all of our hearts. He did that for me back in June of 1972. Uh, he did it uh, <coughs> yesterday morning. He was knocking on somebody's heart. And that's such a beautiful thing. They all of a phone off. Guilty. <laughs> and uh, 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 he wants us to know him, to be conformed to his image, and have eternal life and be kingdom. Um, he'll save you for free, pay him to serve him, and be kingdom people. So, we're going to do a quick review, and we're going to march uh, from uh, the patriarchs all the way up to Jesus tonight. Uh, tomorrow night, we're going to march through the, uh, kind of through the church age, and uh, tomorrow night, we're going to pull it all together. Hopefully, we'll set the world record. There's 66 books in the Bible. How many books in the Bible? 66. Old Testament, 39. How many in the Old Testament? 39. How many books in the Bible? 66. The New Testament, 27. How many books in the New Testament? 27. Old Testament? How many books in the Bible total? Genesis chapter 1 talks about creation. Genesis 2 talks about the special events of creation. Genesis 3 talks about the temptation fall of Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Uh, Genesis 4, story of Cain and Abel. Genesis 5, genealogy, which means family tree. Because God's going to part of it. He's going to give that family tree of Jesus all the way through. The family tree is about Jesus, okay? And the priesthood, but mainly about Jesus. Uh, uh, when Adam and Eve sinned, God pronounced judgment on Satan. I'm going to destroy you someday through the seed of the woman. I'll put enmity between uh, you, Satan, and the woman, between thy seed, those who follow Satan, and her seed. Her seed, shall, thou shalt bruise his heel, he will crush your head. Someday a woman, without a man, is going to have a baby, boy, is going to crush Satan's head. And so Satan's plan, his, his focus in the Old Testament is try to stop the Messianic seed. Because if the Messiah doesn't come, he wins. And so God called, uh, we have uh, the, the call of Abraham, excuse me, back up, Genesis 5, genealogy, family tree. Genesis 6, 7, 8, story of Noah and the flood. And God, Satan's going to try to corrupt the world and use God's holiness against him. They're so wicked. You know, the world was filled with violence. Evil. Men's minds were evil continually. And God's wrath would just come upon the world. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And he builds the ark. I'm going to see the ark tomorrow. It might not be the same one. But it's the same size. And um, Noah built an ark to the saving of his family. And following Genesis 9, we have a story of Noah after the flood and the dispersion. Is how many sons? Three, their names are Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Japheth goes west. We are mostly the descendants of Japheth. Uh, the, the, Ham, the descendants of Ham went south. The Negro people groups, uh, through genetic isolation, we're all the same race, just different uh, genetic uh, uh, combinations. We see the appearance of dominant genetic traits of darker skin uh, and the Negro races. And then the Asian people, uh, the descendants of Shem. Uh, so we have uh, Genesis 9, the story of Noah. After the flood, the dispersion was how many sons? Three. Their names are Shem, Ham, Japheth. Genesis 10, genealogy. Genesis 11, the tower of Babel. When God confounded the languages, forced the people to scatter. Genesis 12, the call of Abraham. The Abrahamic covenant. Covenant means promise. Promise is fivefold. Number one, I'll make of you a great and mighty nation. I'll give you, he's going to have kids. He's too old to have kids. We told the story yesterday. They needed a miracle. They got a miracle. And then when Noah, uh, Abraham's uh, boy Isaac, uh, along the way, uh, was 12 years old, God said, take him up on Mount Moriah where the temple will be built and offer him as a human sacrifice. That was a pagan thing, not a God thing. Why would he want to do 
that test of Abraham's faith at the last seconds. Abraham's willing to offer up his son, believing if God takes him, God will raise him from the dead. The last second, God said, Abraham, Abraham, stop! And they stopped, and there was a ram caught by its horns in the thicket, and God provided the sacrifice, and a whole new realm of the knowledge of who God is in a personal way was revealed to Abraham. To behold, the gyre the Lord will provide. And Abraham, along the way, kind of got... Uh, uh, trying to get ahead of God a little bit. His wife says, well, why do I can't have kids? You know, we've been waiting 15 years. Of, you know, maybe God helps those that help themselves. And so she had a little Jewish, a little Egyptian handmaid named Hagar. And why don't you have a child by her? And everyone's like, okay. And they have an illegitimate son. His name was, remember? Ishmael. His name is Ishmael. Abraham, an illegitimate son. His name is Ishmael. And finally, after 25 years, he has a legitimate son. And that son's name is Isaac, Isaac began, uh, uh, Abraham began Isaac, Isaac uh, doesn't get married until he's 40 years old, his wife Rebecca is barren, and God intervened and gave her, gave her twins, the firstborn was Esau, the second born was Jacob, Esau is not the son of promise to which the Messiah will come, Jacob is the son of promise. I, grew, I get a lot of solace from the Jacob story because Jacob was his name, that liar, usurper, deceiver. He lied to his brother. He stole the murder and lied to his father. The wrath of his brother comes against him. He has to flee for his life. And, uh, and God, when he's on the bottom, God sends Jacob, the story of Jacob's ladder. When he was furthest from God, God was closer to him. God had made an unconditional promise to his father Abraham. And when God makes a promise, it's for real. And even though we have the human stupidity, God's grace is greater than all of our sin. And, you know, God will smack us around a little bit and get us back on the path. And that's what happened when Jacob sees the ladder. He surrenders. He says, God, he wakes up in the morning from that dream. And God was in this place, and I knew it not. And he built an altar, and he worshiped God, and he never looked back. He had his ups and downs. And Jacob became the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. Excuse me while I tie my shoe. It's driving me crazy. And that's not a real long drive. Okay, now... never done that before. All the years of preaching, you're the first. <laughs> what you think of Pastor Duke? He tied his shoe. Right? <laughs> um, Jacob, uh, he goes through all kinds of stuff. He goes down and uh, to the land where his father sent him to find a wife, and, and he runs into Rachel, and she's beautiful, and he wants to marry her, and he works seven years as the dowry. He had to pay for the <laughs> in those days. And at the end of those seven years, they blind, they kind of veil the wife. He goes in at night, and uh, they consummate the marriage. He wakes up in the morning. It's not Rachel. It's her sister, Leah. Oh. And that's, you know, he ain't the one who lied and deceived his family. Guess what? He's reaping his stuff. He's forgiven! But he's still paying the price for his stupidity, okay? And he works seven more years for Rachel. And then uh, Leah has some kids, and Rachel can't. Rachel gives her handmaid, Billa, and then and she has a couple kids by couple more boys by him, and then and then uh, Leah gives her handmaid Zilpa, Zilpa, and she has a couple more, and all together has 12 sons. And he has a favorite son, the favorite son's name is Joseph, the firstborn of Rachel. She was barren, finally she bore a child, and his name is Joseph. Later she died in childbirth, giving birth to her second son, who was Benjamin. And those 12 sons became known as the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? Now, the Messiah, <coughs> Genesis 49.10, there's 12 branches of the tree. Messiah, Genesis 49, 10, will come from, uh, from Judah. He will be of the tribe of Judah. So what's Satan going to do now? He's going to go after the descendants, specifically of Judah. Okay? Because where, wherever the seeds are coming, that's where Satan's going to hit. That was his primary job in the Old Testament. Blind the people, turn them away from God, harden their hearts. To kill the messianic seed line because if I can stop the seed line, I win this thing. Let's do a quick review. How many books in the Bible? <laughs> Old Testament. Nine. New Testament. <laughs> just chapter one talks about. Three. Just two special events of. Three. Just three times they fall of Adam and. Adam and. Just four stories: Cain and Abel. Genesis five genealogy, which means family. Three. Just six of a story of Noah and the. Three. Genesis nine story of Noah after flood is first. There's how many sons? Three. Their names are Shem, Ham, Japheth. Genesis ten. Uh, 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 genealogy, Genesis 11, the Tower of Babel, God confounded the land, he forced the people to scatter, Genesis 12, the call of Abraham, Abraham, the covenant, covenant means promise, promise, promise fivefold, number one, I'll make you great and mighty, nation, give you your own land, bless those who 
Bless you, curse those who, and of your seed who will be born one day, Messiah, Jesus, Savior. Abraham begins, Isaac, he has a little legitimate son, no legitimate son's name is, Yishka became the father of the Arab people, ever thorn in the side of the Jews. Abraham begets Isaac, Isaac begets Jacob and Esau. Esau is not the son of promise, Jacob is the son of promise. Jacob has how many sons? They, the Twelve sons, they later became known as the twelve tribes of Israel. He has a favorite son, his favorite son's name is? What do the brothers think about that? Jealousy, dad makes a coat of many colors. He loved Rachel, she couldn't have kids, she has a kid. That's my favorite kid, the brothers are jealous. Uh, and Joseph had these dreams, and the, they were all making their sheaves of the wheat and, and, and the harvest, and his brother's sheaves bowed down and worshipped his sheaves. What does his brothers think about that? Shut up, dude. We're not, we, don't, we, don't, we hate you. Father, favorite of the father, hated by the brothers, had another dream where the stars and the moon and the sun bowed down and worshipped him. The father's like, dude, shut up. Your brothers already hate you. Father sends him out to check up with the brothers how they're doing. He gives, a, he gives, a, he gives an honest report, which happened to be an evil report, the hatred for the brothers boil over. Dad sends him out again. His brothers turn against him, and they sell him into slavery. And he winds up down in Egypt, where he's hired by Potiphar. And everything David, jo Joseph touches turns to gold. The Bible says, and the Lord was with Joseph. It sure didn't feel like it, but the Lord was with Joseph. And um, um, back home, the brothers, they take his coat of many colors, they dip it in blood, they, bring it, they rip it up, they give it back to dad. We just found this out in the desert trying to make the dad believe that Joseph was eaten by a wild beast or something. The father thinks Joseph is dead. One of the most dramatic stories. Uh, 30, uh, uh, 13 chapters in the book of Genesis about Joseph. An amazing thing. There's like 16 different direct par parallels between Joseph and Jesus. Joseph is 30 years old. He becomes prime minister, prime minister of Egypt. Jo Jesus is 30 years old. He begins his ministry. Uh, Joseph uh, uh, was forsaken by his own brothers. Jesus came into his own. His own received him not. Uh, Joseph is in prison with uh, two male factors. One is saved and one is released. Jesus is on the cross between two thieves. One is saved and one, one uh, dies of his sins. And there's this amazing story. So when you think about the Bible, people say, you know, man wrote the Bible. Man would, couldn't have written the Bible if he wanted to, and he wouldn't have written it if he could have. It's an amazing book. And so we have, we have this human drama in their lives going on. But in addition to that, we have these pictures of the exact details of the life of Jesus. It's all pointing to Jesus. And when our lives start lining up like the Bible, we'll start pointing to Jesus. Man, I tell you, our lives start coming together. We have adversity. You know, you might get hit by a car when you're trying to pull into the church parking lot. You know, stuff happens. But I'm okay, you know. I mean, if I die, I have eternal life, you know. My wife is sent for my body, I'm sure. <laughs> so it's a battle, you know. But Jesus is central. Joseph gets forsaken by his brother, sold into slavery, winds up down in Egypt, where he's uh, a servant, a slave to Potiphar. But the Lord's with Joseph. Everything he touches turns to gold. Potiphar put him in charge of the guards, put him in charge of the house, put him in charge of the finances, put him in charge of everything. Potiphar's wife had eyes for Joseph. She tries to hit on Joseph. Joseph says, no way, man. I ain't going there. And she, the Bible says she pressed upon him daily. And one day he's in the house alone. She grabs him by the coat. Come play with me. And uh, the Joseph says, no way. And, and she grabs him and he kind of peels out of the coat. And he, he trucks out of there. And she yells, rape, rape, you're trying to rape me. And everybody believes her report. Her husband comes home from work. And Joseph, uh, without divine intervention, probably would have been dead. But the husband, evidently, Potiphar had enough respect for Joseph, just put him in prison. Joseph is forsaken by his family, framed by Potiphar's wife, and now he's in prison. And the Bible says the Lord was with Joseph. God doesn't put his easiest way before his best people. And so we can learn from that. Uh, sometimes when we make a deep commitment to Christ and our hearts are genuine, God might trust us. We're going through some troubled waters, but he'll be with us. We have to trust him. And when we can't trace his hand, we can trust his heart. The Bible makes a promise to us who love the Lord. All things will work together in the end for those who love the Lord, to those who are called according to purpose, Romans 8, 28. And so Joseph's in prison. There's two, two prisoners there, and the, and, the, and the head of the prison sees Joseph. Man, this guy, you can trust this guy. He doesn't belong in prison. He's a great guy. He kind of puts Joseph in charge of running the prison. And uh, the Lord is with Joseph. And, but it really probably didn't feel like it. And then these two guys have these dreams, and they come to Joseph, and Joseph, by God, had the power to interpret the dreams. 
and he turned to the dream. The one guy would, would uh, be turned three days, would, would, would be killed, and the other, uh, the butler would be restored to his butlership. The, the, the Pharaoh would forgive him and bring him back. And the guy said, well, when I get back to Pharaoh, I'll tell him that you're innocent. You get out of here. And so, sure enough, uh, three days later, the, the one guy dies, and the other guy's released. He goes to Pharaoh. What's he do? He forgets all about Joseph. Joseph has been framed by his family, for, uh, 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 framed, or forsaken by his family, framed by Potiphar's wife, forgotten in the prison, and God had him right where he wanted him. Isn't that interesting? Two years he's forgotten. Two long years. And then somebody had a dream. Pharaoh! <laughs> He calls in his magicians and soothsayers and says, Hey, interpret the dream for me. They can't. And then uh, the butler says, Oh my goodness, my sins. I, I reminded, I was a, a Hebrew guy, a Jewish guy, in prison. He had the power from his God, the true living God, to interpret the dreams. Pharaoh's like, Bring him in. And then and Joseph wakes up in, as a prisoner in the morning, and by noon, he interprets the dream as made prime minister of Egypt. Coincidence. No, great big God who works among people's lives. And it is the ultimate in life when you can begin to trace his hand. I remember as an 18-year-old kid out of the drug culture and all that goes with that threat of being in prison for like 20 years, <clears throat> sentenced for what I was doing every day in drug trafficking, and then all of a sudden begin to sense that the hand of God is upon me. And God can take all the can I say the word crap here? Of my old life. I just sort of just did, I guess. <laughs> and he can take all of all of my trouble, the broken home that I came out of, the domestic violence that was in our home, the alcohol abuse, the drug abuse. And I learned so many things there. I learned that we have compassion on people who are hurting. Because I've hurt. And so God is the ultimate man. And when you begin to know him, and, and, and I, I, I can't say how can you know him and not love him, and to know him and to love him and to have opportunity to serve him. One preacher said he saves you for free and then he pays you to serve him. And you begin to have that sense of destiny in your life, to you know who you are, why you're here, what you're doing. And God's got an agenda right now. Jesus gave the job to present the knowledge of God to the world through the Jews and did a lousy job of it. And then when Jesus came, we're going to get to there in just a few minutes. When Jesus came, that job was given to the church. And he let schmucks like me, <laughs> he lets the likes of you, just everyday people. He knocks on our heart. He pulls us into his plans. <sighs> wow. That's awesome, isn't it? And we have been given the opportunity, the privilege, the responsibility, the commission to spread the gospel. We had an accident and your preacher came out and witnessed to two, a couple of teenage boys came out and witnessed the guy invited him out to your church. The preacher came out and found out this guy was fundraising uh, for a local uh, high school uh, uh, thing and wrote a check to this guy. <laughs> the guy I think would be in church when be here. Uh, holy cow. The guy's thinking, maybe this accident wasn't so bad after all. I've been looking for a church. Maybe this is where I belong. Coinky day? I mean, you just get that sense of destiny. So I have right out of the door. This guy's like, I hit a guy that it was a preacher. He's got a preach in 50 minutes. And the church just came out and donated to my cause. And and I, I've been looking for a church. What are your tears? He came out and witnessed to him and invited him to church. Then the pastor came out and that's and then also, the hand of God just works among everyday people. Joseph wakes up in prison one morning. He's prime minister of Egypt, the world superpower at the time. That's our God. And uh, there's seven years of plenty. They save the food, followed by seven years of famine. Second year of the famine, back home, they run out of food. And jo Joseph's father, Jacob, uh, thinks, Joseph's dad, that we're out of food, we're all going to starve, I hear there's food in Egypt, so he says, the brothers come to meet Joseph, <laughs> down to get food, and who they run to, Joseph, they don't recognize him, but he recognizes them, 
he speaks he, he speaks uh, uh, Egyptian to them, and they don't understand him, but he understands them, and he messes with them a little bit. Finally, reveals himself to them. To this, he said, "What you guys meant for evil, and it was evil. God meant for good." Isn't that amazing? What a lot of times God lets evil things happen to us, but in the end, it can turn into something really fantastic. What you meant for evil, God meant for good. So there's all these messages. God shows up in everyday life, but there's a big agenda. The Messiah's coming. Satan's going to try to stop that. He tries to starve out the nation, but God would save the nation through uh, the favored son going down to Egypt. Uh, and Joseph is there, and the nation is saved. And Satan's going to try to starve it out, but he failed. And they found solace, and they found respite, and they found uh, housing, and, and they survived the famine through their own favorite son, Joseph, who's prime minister of the Egypt. And so we should have no reason to be really too shook up about what's going to happen in November around America. Amen? We know who's on the throne. We win this thing in the end. Joseph is prime minister. The family comes down. God gives him the land of Goshen. Gives him the land of Goshen. Say that. Goshen. So now Riverdale is a it's about the most paradise conditions. It almost never rains. It's beautiful. It's kind of subtropical. And uh, it's a beautiful place to be. There's plenty of water from the Nile River. And uh, it was a beautiful place to be. Then there rises up a pharaoh who, uh, as, well, as Jacob is dying, he comes down to Egypt. He reunites with Joseph when he thought he was dead. He lives there 17 years. And he talks, uh, calls the boys in as he's dying. And he, he blesses each one. And he kind of says, Reuben, you kind of messed up. And he he went down the line and made a prophecy of each one of them in Genesis 49, Jacob's on his deathbed, and says prophetically that the Messiah will be born of Judah. So say it's going to roll up his sleeves and go after Judah. Joseph is in, uh, uh, after Joseph dies, he rises up a Pharaoh who knows not Joseph. He sees the multiplication of the Hebrew people, the Jewish people. He's freaking out. There will be a slave revolt. So he begins to kill all the baby Jewish boys. Gee, I wonder who's behind that. Satan. Why? To try to stop the Messianic seed line. But the Hebrew midwives kind of had a little uh, civil disobedience and they didn't always obey that. And there was a mama named Jochebed who had a little baby boy. She hid him for three months, could hide him no more, makes a little boat, puts him in the Nile River, says a prayer. That little baby's found by Pharaoh's daughter and adopted to be Pharaoh's son in line to be the next Pharaoh, Coinkydink, or Providence. And so now we have Prince of Egypt, baby Moses, rising up to be the next Pharaoh. God prophesied through Abraham that they would be sojourners in a land that was not their own for 400 years. And those 400 years are coming to an end. And God floats little baby Moses across the Nile River. He's found by Pharaoh's daughter, and he's going to be prime. He's going to be. Uh, he's going to be Pharaoh one day, it seems. And Moses is raised kind of by his mama, who was his nurse, and his, and his adopted mama Pharaoh. And he knew the best of both worlds. And when he was 40 years old, he kind of knew that I'm the deliverer. He knew that story about his childhood. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the chosen one. I got all these political connections. I got access to the press. I got financial leverage. Everybody knows who I am. Surely the Jewish people will follow me. I'll get him out of here. And he tries at age 40 under his own power and he miserably fails. We have a vision. We have the death of a vision. And you know, he has to flee. Pharaoh finds out he had killed this Egyptian man who was beating uh, a Hebrew uh, slave. And the Jews didn't rally around him. Pharaoh comes after him. He's forced to flee to the backside of the Midian Desert for 40 years. Wondering what happened. I thought I was the man. I thought I could do it. I miserably failed. I, my dreams are shattered. We had a vision. We had the death of a vision. And after 40 years in God's time, he's up on Mount Sinai. And he sees a burning bush that's not burning up. And it freaks him out. He climbs up to see it. And he hears the voice of the God of his father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, speak to him. Moses! Moses! I've chosen you to lead my people out. Moses said, they won't listen to me. God said, oh, yes, they will. Moses said, no, they won't. God said, what do you have in your hand? It's, uh, a staff, throw it down, and it becomes a serpent. He said, they'll believe you. God equipped Moses with signs, miracles, and wonders. Sends Moses back down into Egypt to deliver his people. He gets there before Pharaoh, uh, before his people. They don't believe him. He does the miracles. They believe him. He goes there before Pharaoh. Pharaoh mocks him, makes fun of him, doesn't believe, doesn't let him go. Doubles the work order. Things got worse before they got better. And the people are freaking out. And Moses, we got so excited. You're going to lead us out of here. And things have gotten worse. And we wish we had never met you. See your ugly face. And then God began to do the plagues. God sent the ten plagues. 
and one by one, Egypt is being destroyed. Those ten plagues were not random. You know, the, uh, the Holy Trinity didn't get together and say, oh, this like they're frogs. That like really freak out the girls, man. Oh, no, 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 no. There was a, 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 a guy named Hopi, a frog god of Egypt. And so every one of the ten plagues were pinpoint precision god bombs against the false deities of Egypt. Amazing. And one by one, God's disassembling Egypt. The whole world's watching, and they're realizing that the God of the Jews, whoever he is, he's the true God, he's the big God, he's, he's the powerful God. It's a testimony to the world. God sends the ten plagues. Pharaoh uh, says, okay, you can go. And Moses leads the people on what we call the Exodus. He leads them on the Exodus. Can you say that? Exodus, they're leading Egypt. And then uh, and he gets out by the Red Sea, and Pharaoh changes his mind and sends out his army, and the army's going to kill him, and the people are freaking out. Oh, no, they got the Red Sea, or they got the angry Egyptian army over here. We're going to die, Moses. We didn't you got you. You just brought us out here to kill us. And, and then Moses raises the staff, the waters part. Israel goes across on dry ground, and God drowns the Egyptian army in the Red Sea. And they get on the other side, and they have a party. And they sing a song, and they celebrate the great God. How many books in the Bible? Old Testament? New Testament. Genesis chapter 1 talks about? Genesis 2 talks about special events of? The three temptations fall of Adam and? The sword story of Cain and? Genesis 5 genealogy of the family? The 6 and 8 story of Noah and the? Genesis 9 and the story of Noah? The spurs of how many sons? Your names are? Shem and Jacob. Genesis 10 genealogy, Genesis 11, Tower of Babel. God kind of a language is forced the people to scatter. Genesis 12, the call of? Abraham, Abraham, the covenant, covenant means promise, promise fivefold. Number one, I'll make you great and mighty. Give you your own land. Bless those who bless you, curse those who curse you. If you see who's going to be born, decide. Genesis, uh, uh, Abraham begets Isaac, uh, has an illegitimate son. The illegitimate son's name is Ishmael. Ishmael became the father of the Arab people. Genesis has a uh, Abraham is a legitimate son. Abraham begat Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob and Esau. Esau is not the son of promise. Jacob is the son of promise. Jacob have any sons? They later became known as the 12 tribes of Israel. A favorite son, his name is? What do brothers think about that? Jealous. They sell him into slavery. He winds up down in Egypt and, 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 and he's uh, forsaken in Egypt and, and thrown into prison until who has a dream? Pharaoh has a dream. Who interprets a dream? Joseph goes, Joseph goes from being a uh, prisoner to prime minister of Egypt. And there's seven years of plenty, followed by seven years of famine. The family comes down, which you guys meant for evil, God meant for good. They land in Egypt. Pharaoh dies. God raises, uh, a new pharaoh, or Joseph dies. God raises up a new Pharaoh who doesn't know Joseph and puts the Jewish people into slavery. They cry, we want to have a deliverer. God floats a little baby named who across the Nile River? Moses, found by whose daughter? And Moses tries at age 40 to deliver the people. And in his own power, he miserably... Fails. Forty years later, on the backside of the Midian Desert, he sees a burning bush. God says, I want you to lead my people out. He goes to Egypt. Uh, Pharaoh says, no. God sent the ten plagues. Pharaoh said, okay, go. And then he changes his mind, sends out his army. And what does God do with the Red Sea? Parts the water. He goes across on dry ground. And in other words, Moses leads the people back to Mount Sinai, like God told him. Moses goes up on the mountain. God gives him the Ten Commandments, the Levitical law, and the blueprint to build this tabernacle in the wilderness. Moses goes to Mount what's, what mountain? Mount Sinai, where he had earlier seen the burning bush. And God gives him the Ten, the Levitical law, and the blueprint to build the tabernacle in the wilderness. Moses up there comes down and dancing naked around the golden calf, and he says. To Aaron, his brother, what happened? And Aaron says, oh, and the people brought me the gold and silver. I threw it in the fire and I popped this golden calf. Come on, man! I, what's wrong with you, Aaron? And God forgave me. Moses took, the ten, uh, took that golden calf, threw it in the fire, burned it, and just threw it in the ashes, threw it in the fire. It, 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 it took the ashes, threw it in the water, made the people drink it. Sound like a Baptist preacher to me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, God forgives them. And on they go. They build a tabernacle in the wilderness. And um, they, they travel across the wilderness to a town called Kadesh Barnea. They go to a town called Kadesh Barnea. God says, I want you to take 12 tribes, five, go from each of the 12 tribes, send them over, check out the land. And uh, so they go, and they're there for 40 days. They come back, two of them, Joshua and Caleb, give a good report. It's awesome, just like God said. Well, tell them, I'm giving evil 
hunger apart. Yeah, it's awesome, okay, but there's giants in the land. We're like grasshoppers in their sight. Yeah, they got walled cities. They got mighty armies. We're dead men. We can't go in there. They saw the enemy is too great to fight. Joshua did saw that the enemy is, is, is no match for God. We're no match for them, but they're no match for God. They saw it by faith. The other saw it by sight. Ten give, two give a good report. Ten give an evil report. Who does the nation listen to? The evil report. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. It's so easy to believe evil reports. Part of being a responsible Christian, don't listen to junk. Write that down. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Okay? And uh, they come back after this cause, they wonder, uh, and, and they believe the evil report, and God's kicked off and says, For this cause, you're going to wander in the wilderness for how long? Four years. Forty days of opportunity followed by forty years of judgment. What do you think? I think not. Forty days, or forty <laughs> years, they wander in the wilderness. That generation dies, and God raises up a new leader named Joshua. And Moses goes up and dies up on Mount Nebo. You know how I can remember Nebo? Your knee, your elbow. Moses goes up on Mount Nebo, and he dies. God buries his body. God didn't let the body of Moses be found. Probably they would have built a shrine and worshipped Moses. They didn't have to worship Moses. They would worship the God of Moses. And so we have uh, uh, Joseph uh, interpreting whose dream? Joseph interpreted whose dream? Pharaoh's dream. And he went from being prisoner to being prime minister of Egypt. There's seven years of plenty, followed by seven years of famine. In the second year, the family comes down. God gives them the, uh, and the, and the family, the Jews come down, 70 people into Egypt. And God gave them the Nile River Delta called the land of Goshen. It rises up a Pharaoh who knows not. Joseph puts the Jewish people into slavery. We cry, we want to have a deliverer. And a little mama named Jock Bed floats a baby named who across the Nile River? Moses. Moses tries at age 40 to deliver the people by his own power and he miserably and he's, uh, and he's is washed out into the Sinai Desert. 40 years he sees up on Mount Sinai a burning at a sermon called and the old bush will do. And Mo, God says, I want you to lead my people. Out he goes down into Egypt. They don't believe. He does the miracles. They believe he goes before Pharaoh. Before Pharaoh, Pharaoh says, no, God sent the ten plagues. Pharaoh changed his mind said, okay, you can go. We call that the Exodus. We call that the Exodus. Both, uh, they lead the people. Uh, Moses leads them out. Pharaoh changes his mind, sends out the army. God parts the waters of the Red Sea. They go across on dry ground. God drowns the Egyptian army. They sing a song. Moses leads the people out and, and to the Mount Sinai. He goes up on the mountain where God gave the Ten, yes. the, the Levitical, and the blueprint to build the tabernacle in the wilderness, their worship center. Oh my goodness, the beauty of the tabernacle. What a rough place to have a construction project that God was with them. And, uh, and then Moses uh, sends in how many spies? And they go in for how many days? And two of them come back and give a, ten of them give a, who's the nation to listen to? And then for this cause they wander in the wilderness for how long? Forty years. And Moses dies up on Mount, and God up on Mount Nebo, and God lists and God lifts up another leader. His name is Joshua. Joshua leads the people across the piled up waters of the Jordan River. They, they, it's at flood stage. God likes to do things dramatically. It's flood stage. They, they, the, wild, the waters of the Jordan River pile up and they go across on dry ground. Just as God was with Moses, he will be with Joshua. Remember that. Just as God uh, was with Preacher Smith way back when. Some of you remember that? And he, he just sat down. God is with Pastor uh, with Ted House. As God was with Ted, he's with Pastor Brent. As he's with Pastor Brent, he's going to be with Pastor Joe. As he's with Pastor Duke, he'll be... It's not, it's not the people. It's the God that we worship. And it's hard to learn that sometimes as people because we get attached to people. We love Moses and Joshua. You're no Moses. No, but he was a great Joshua. Amen. They go across, and the first city they, they fight is Jericho. Down came the walls of Jericho. They go up against a little old pipsqueak AI, but somebody had taken the accursed thing. A guy named Achan took the accursed thing in, AI, in, in, in uh, uh, Jericho, and when they went against AI, they didn't have God's power. AI came out and kicked their butts. And they knew there was a problem. And they got right with God. We don't want to let sin in our lives. It will mess us up. We want to stay right and have our eyes on Jesus. I confess my sins every day. Every day I confess my sins. I want to be right with God every day. And then they can confess that he, he, it was capital punishment. 
and he was, and, and God was with him, and God used Joshua to conquer the land. God used Joshua to conquer the land. Joshua died. They never conquered all the land that God intended for them to have. They, God had more than what they were willing to, to fight for. And uh, tremendous stories of Joshua. After the period, when Joshua dies, we enter into the 400 year period called the time of the judges. There were 12 judges. How many judges? 12. That's the number of administration. 12 disciples, 12 tribes, 12 judges. Uh, there's 12 judges. They'd kind of be serving God, and God would lift up, and then they'd turn away from God, God would lift up an enemy. The enemy would put pressure on them, you get scared and turn back to God. God would raise up a judge to preach to them repentance, and they'd get right with God, and then they'd turn away from God in time of prosperity. And then God would lift up another judge, and, and, and lift up another enemy to persecute them, and, and they oh God, they'd turn back to God, and round and round, there we go, round the judges, push the judge. The period of the 12 judges, 400 years. God, they just keep making the same mistake over and over again. That's kind of like me is confessing my sin. It's me again, God. It's human nature. We need Jesus. Amen? So we have the period of the 12. We just covered 400 years in about 90 seconds, okay? Following the time of the, the 400, uh, the, how many judges? 12 judges. Following the time of the judges, the people came to, they came to Samuel, the prophet. We want to have a king. Well, the other nations get to have a king. We want a king. It's not fair. How's can they get to have a king? And we don't get to have a king. We want a king. And, and Samuel said, you don't need a king. God's your king. And we want to see a king. We want to have a palace. We want to have a parade. We want to have a crown. We, we want. He said, okay, you get a king. And God lifted up a king. First king's name was Saul. He said, you're going to pay a tenth in taxes. You like that? Well, that would be nice. But only a tenth to taxes? A tenth of the Lord, a tenth of taxes. And, and the people bought it. So first king's name was Saul. Saul walked with God and then he turned away from God. And God said, I'll lift up a man after my own heart. Second king's name was David. First king's name was Saul. Uh, second king's name is David. David's the man after God's own heart. David uh, subdued and smote the enemies and put and united the nation. And the Lord was with him. He had a, had, a, had a couple bad days messing around with Uriah's husband. His wife was Bathsheba, and she was with child, and he didn't confess his sins. He tried to cover it. He went from bad to worse. He conspired to the death of her innocent husband, Uriah, and uh, he lived a lie for a year until the prophet Nathan came, got in his face, and said, Thou art the man. And David repented. Psalm 32, Psalm 51, David repented. Good people can do bad things. Eyes on God, not on people. Don't let people mess you up about God. Let God straighten you out about people. And so, let's back up again. Uh, following the conquering of the land, God used Joshua to conquer the land. Following the time of, uh, 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 of Joshua, we entered the period of how many judges? Wow. 400 years. And the people would prosper and turn away from God. God would lift up in, and God would send the judge to preach repentance. They would repent, and God would smite the enemy, and round and round they went. And following the 400 years of the judges, the people said, we want to have our own God said, oh no, you. And they said, oh yes, we. And they got a king. The first king's name is Saul. Saul. Second king's name is David. David. David was the man after God's own. And David subdued the enemies. And David had a dream. I want to build, I want to build, I want to build the temple for God. And the, and, the, and the prophet Nathan said, God said, no, you can't build the temple. But God wants to set up a monarchy through you. And one of your descendants will sit on the throne of Israel for how long? Forever. <laughs> what David wanted to do was this big. What God wanted to do was this big. Sometimes God says no. Amen. I remember when I was just a new Christian. I want to go, God, I want to marry you, I want to marry you, I want to marry you. And God said, nope. Long story. I have time for that. About a year later, oh, I want to marry Timmy, I want to marry Timmy, I want to marry Timmy. God said, no. I got a little mad at God every time. Oh, God, oh, God, I got a little mad at God. God said, no. Summer of 70, summer of 90, summer of 70, I'm going to go home. Oh, God, I want to marry And he said, yes. <laughs> Boy, did I win or what? <laughs> so if God says no, it's a good thing. Because he's got something better. David wanted to build a temple, and God said, no, 
I have your son build the temple. But I'm going to take one of your descendants, sit on the throne of Israel, how long? Forever. Forever. You see, that's where that genealogy thing comes in. The son of the son of the son of the son of David was Solomon, the son of Solomon of Rehoboam. He had the 19 kings of Judah. And then, then Israel falls to Babylonian captivity. But that genealogy goes on, even though they don't have a, a king on the throne, they still have a rightful heir. And Joseph, the spouse husband of Mary, was the rightful heir to the throne of Israel. And by adopting baby Jesus as his own son, Jesus was the rightful heir to the throne of Israel. And when Jesus comes back, he sets up his kingdom where he rules and reigns for how long? Forever. Did anybody just get a goosebump connecting those dots? What an amazing book. What an amazing story. What an amazing plan. I said, if Joseph was a nobody, well, that's the way you might look at it, but he was a rightful heir to the throne of Israel. How cool is that? We have the kings. First king's name is Saul. Saul turned away from God. God said, I'll raise up a king after my own heart. Second king's name is David. David wants to build the temple. God says, nope, your son will build the temple. And but God made the Davidic covenant. Abrahamic covenant. Make a great money to give your own land bless. And the Davidic covenant. One from your lineage, David, will sit on the throne of Israel forever. And on the throne of the world forever, too. Israel will be the capital of the world. So we have the, that's called the united monarchy. Can you say that? United monarchy. First king was Saul. Second king was David. Third king was Solomon. Solomon builds the temple, begins really well. He comes to the throne. Oh, Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, give me wisdom. God said, give me anything you want. And he didn't ask for riches. He didn't ask for fame. He didn't ask for, for a larger empire. He just asked for wisdom to guide these people. And God liked that. God blessed him, gave him wisdom beyond all, and P.S. made him the richest man ever and gave him fame, and gave him fortune, and then he kind of got stupid there for a few years, and, and multiplied wives, wound up with a thousand wives and concubines. Somebody said, if Solomon's so wise, why do we want 999 mother-in-laws? <laughs> that was a good question. I said, I don't know. So, first king's name is Saul, second king David, third king Solomon. Solomon builds the yes, temple, and Solomon kind of turns away from God, and for this cause, he said, the kingdom will be rent. And uh, when Solomon died, his son Rehoboam, his son, Rehoboam, comes to, pop, comes to the throne. He goes to the old guys, what do I do this? And then taxes are high, morale is low. Your dad got a little weird at the end. Ease up on the people. Bring taxes down a bit. The people will revive. They'll follow you. Then he went to the young man. What do you think I ought to do? The young man says, dude, it's your, it's, it's your time, man. It's, 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 raise taxes. You know, go for the gold, dude. And he listened to the young man. And he gave the dumbest uh, inaugural speech in the history of the world. And Israel, the nation, listened to him, shook their heads, and ten tribes went north, kingdom divided. Now we have the divided monarchy. Israel to the north, and Judah. David was in the line of Judah. The Messiah will come through the line of Judah. And Judah will be the faithful tribe. They had their ups and downs, but they will be the faithful tribe. Benjamin lived among the Judah, Judean people. So it's really two tribes. Uh, 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 Benjamin and Judah kind of all were together. And the kingdom divided. Ten tribes in the north, two tribes in the south. We have the three kings of the united monarchy. Their names were uh, Saul, number two, David, third, uh, Solomon. Solomon builds the temple. Solomon dies. The son Rambo comes to the throne. Goes to the old guys, go to the young guys, listen to the young guys. And, and they hate him. And for this cause, the kingdom divides. Israel to the north, Judah to the south. Uh, in, in Judah to the north, uh, excuse me, to Israel to the north, there's 19 kings, all bad. Turn away from God, God sends prophets, they don't listen, he sends prophets, they kill him, and because of their disobedience, they fell to Shalmaneser V uh, in 722 BC, uh, and Israel forever ceased to exist as a nation. Judah to the south, 19 kings, 7 of them good, 12 of them bad. They should have learned from Israel. They didn't. They're stupid. And God says, they're prophets. Sometimes they listen. Most of the time they didn't. And because of their disobedience, they fell uh, to Babylonian captivity under King Nebuchadnezzar in 605 B.C. 
The siege began, the, the siege continued until 586 BC when, when Nebuchadnezzar just wiped them out, the, the temple was destroyed, and the Jews were taken captive. So following the, the you had the united monarchy with three, uh, three kings. First king's name was Saul, second king's name is uh, David, third king's name is Solomon. Solomon builds the temple. Uh, following Solomon's death, Rehoboam gives a dumb inaugural speech in the kingdom, divides into two. Israel to the north, 19 kings, all of them. Judah to the south, 19 kings. How many of them are good? Seven are good. And because of Israel's disobedience, they fall to uh, uh, Assyrian captivity, 722 B.C. And the Shalmaneser V, Judah doesn't listen. They fall to uh, Babylonian captivity, beginning in 605, the final fall, 586 B.C. And Israel forever ceases to be a nation. Judah ceases ever to have control of the land politically again. Nebuchadnezzar takes them to captivity. Babylon controls Jerusalem. Many years later, Babylon falls to Persia. There was a great prophet, a Jewish prophet, that rises up in Babylon. His name is Daniel. The Lord was with Daniel and his buddies Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Even though the Jews have been kind of wiped out, God's still on the throne. There's still going to be a rightful heir to the throne and the king. The Messiah's still going to come. Satan's going to try to wipe out the nation. And he miserably fails. He's got to play and stop the messianic line. And he thinks he's going to use uh, uh, the, the Hebrews uh, Pharaoh to kill all the baby Jewish boys. And he fails. And he thinks he's going to do it by uh, here and there. And he always fails. And now the Judah is captive to Babylon. Babylon falls to Persia. There rises up a Persian king. And he's got a guy, a, a priest named Ezra. And God puts on a Persian king, Cyrus's heart, to send Ezra back and rebuild the temple. The temple goes down under Nebuchadnezzar. And the temple goes back up under the Persians. Down under Babylon, back up under the Persians. God took pagan money from a Persian pagan king and, and paid the bill for Ezra and Zerubbabel to go back and build the temple. That's the God we worship. It'll come down when it's God's time. That's true for America. It'll be raised up in, in God's time because he's the sovereign in control of the universe. And so uh, Nebuchadnezzar uh, destroys Ju Judah. The temple goes down. There raises up a great prophet in, in Babylon. His name is Daniel. Daniel uh, it gives great prophecies about the, the final days, uh, at the end of the world, the rise and fall of the great world empires, Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome. And then Babylon falls uh, to Persia. Cyrus sends Zerubbabel and Ezra to rebuild the temple. The temple goes up a few years later, 445 B.C. A decree comes to Artaxerxes, king of Persia, to send Nehemiah back and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And the Jews are back home awaiting. We have the chronological close of the Old Testament. Followed by 400 silent years, no prophets. And the Jews are back home. They're not in control. Babylon fell to Persia. Persia fell to Greece. Greece fell to Rome. Rome was in power. Caesar's in power, controlling politically. <coughs> the Jews are home, awaiting the coming of the Messiah. Oh my. We're going to review. We're going to review. We're going to call it Everybody stand up. Stand on your tiptoes. Stretch it out a bit. Take a deep breath. Let it out real slow. Twist it to the right. Twist it to the left. You ready to get with it? Get your brains in gear. Oxygenate yourself. A couple deep breaths. Get the air flowing. You ready? Sit back down. Here we go. This is a trial run tonight. We're going to go over it again tomorrow night. We're going to go for the world record. How many books in the Bible? Six. Old Testament? Nine. New Testament. Nine. Genesis chapter 1 talks about? Creation. Two special events of? Creation. Three temptation fall of Adam and Eve. There's four story of Canaan. There's five genealogy of his family. There's six every story of Noah and the flood. There's nine the story of Noah. After, after the flood, the dispersion of his how many sons? Three. Uh, their names are Shem and Jacob. Genesis uh, uh, 10 and 5 genealogy. Genesis 11, the tower of Babel. God confounded the land has forced the people to scatter. Genesis 12, the call of Abraham. Abraham in covenant. Covenant means I'll give you uh, fivefold. I'll give, make of you uh, make of you great and mighty. Give you your own. Bless those who curse those who and your seed who's coming one day. But, and Abraham has an illegitimate son. His name is Israel became the father of the Arabic. That's a legitimate son. Abraham begat Isaac. Isaac begat Jacob and Esau. Esau is 
Not just a prophet. Jacob is the son of prophets. Jacob has how many sons? Isn't that became known as the 12? Tribe of Joseph. He has a favorite son. His name is? What the brothers think about that. So they sold him into slavery and he winds up down in. And so who has a dream? Who interprets a dream? Joseph goes from being prisoner in the morning to prime minister in the afternoon. Seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. The, the nation comes down to Egypt. Uh, Pharaoh gives him the, the Nile River Delta, which is called the land of Goshen. There rises up a Pharaoh who knows not Joseph and puts the Jewish people into slavery. And they cry out for deliver after 400, 400 years in Egypt. They cry out for deliver. And a, little, a mother floats a little baby across the Nile River. The baby's name is Moses. Moses tries at age 40 to deliver the people in his own power and he miserably. And, and, and he goes up on the backside of the desert uh, until uh, 40 years later and sees up on Mount Sinai a burning bush. God says, I want you to lead my people out. He said, they won't listen. Yes, they will. It goes before Pharaoh. Pharaoh says, no, God sent the ten plagues. Pharaoh said, okay, you can go. We call that the Exodus. And Moses leads the people out. They're trapped by the Red Sea. Pharaoh changes his mind, sends out the army. People cry, oh, God, oh, God. And God parted the waters of the Red Sea. Egypt goes across. What happens to Pharaoh's army? They're drowned. They have a victory celebration. God leads Moses to Mount Sinai. Moses goes up on Mount Sinai. God gave him the Ten Commandments, the Levitical Law, and the blueprint to build the tabernacle in the wilderness. They come back down, and they go up to the land, page party, and they send in how many spies? Two of them come back and give a, ten of them give a bad report. Who do they listen to? And for this cause, they wander in the wilderness for how long? Forty years. They come back. Uh, uh, Moses dies up on Mount Nebo. God lifts up a new leader. His name is Joshua. Joshua leads the people to conquer the land. Uh, following Joshua, the people uh, enter the period of the how many judges? They, they, their prosperity, they turn away from God. God raises up an enemy. They turn back to God. Round and round they went. At the time of the how many judges? Twelve judges. The people said, we will live our own. And they got him. First king's name is, second king's name is, David was a man after God's own. And then David, son, David wanted to build the temple, but God said, no, I'll raise up a new, uh, a, your son. Who built the temple? Third king? Solomon. And God made the Davidic covenant, the promise to David, one from your seed, your line will be sent on the throne of Israel. How long? The Messianic seed line. And uh, three times in the period of, the, of the, the 19 kings in the north, three times. That bloodline came down to one descendant. And the devil almost wiped it out three times. But every time, God intervened. And those, that descendant lived and had sons and daughters. And the sea line was never broken. So we had the three kings. Solomon builds the temple, has a dumb son named Rambo, gives a dumb inaugural speech. And for that cause, the kingdom divided. Ten, king, or 12, ten tribes in the north called Israel. Two tribes in the south called Judah. Nineteen kings in the north, all of them. God sends prophets. They don't like them. They kill them. And for that reason, uh, uh, Judah falls into cap uh, to Assyrian captivity in 722 B.C. under King Shalmaneser the fifth. Down in, in Judah, they don't listen. There's 19 kings. Seven of them are good. They have revival. They turn away from God. They have another revival. They turn away from God. But finally, God had it up to here, and they fall to captivity to Babylon under Nebuchadnezzar. In 605 B.C., final fall, 586 B.C., what happens to the temple? It comes down. Uh, uh, we have a great prophet rise up in Babylon. His name was Daniel. prophesied the rise and fall of Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome. And the second... The final kingdom of Rome, the last days under the Antichrist. That's all given by Daniel. Fantastic teaching. Uh, and uh, the temple's down. God puts in the heart of a pagan king named uh, uh, Cyrus to send Zerubbabel and Ezra back to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. A few years later, 445 BC, uh, King Artaxerxes of Persia puts on the heart of Nehemiah to go back and rebuild the city, the walls. And we have the chronological close of the Old Testament. The Jews are home, but not in control. And they wait. During that time, Persia falls to Greece, Alexander the Great. He, off, uh, he had a, 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 a tetrarch over Jerusalem whose name was Antiochus Epiphanes. I've heard it pronounced Antiochus, uh, different ways. I call it Antiochus Epiphanes. He offered a swine on the altar of the rebuilt temple in Jerusalem to desecrate the temple. 
to persecute the Jews. A famous uh, wealthy political family rose up called the Maccabees. If you come out of a Catholic background, you see the apocryphal books, uh, the book of Maccabees, 1st, 2nd Maccabees. Great historical books. They're not scripture, but they're great historical books. And they talk about what happened during uh, the, those 400 years between the rebuilding of Jerusalem under Nehemiah, uh, especially under the Grecian Empire. That family revolted against uh, the military, you know, uh, militia, and they they stopped the, the Grecian persecution or Antiochus Epiphanes, and they were a very family, very famous family in uh, Israel. And uh, the Maccabean people became what we know as the Pharisees at the time of Jesus. Just a little quick history lesson there. This thing all fits together. It's an unbelievable story. It's God's story. It's his story. It's history. And the central theme of it all is Jesus. There's coming a promised seed. Satan tries to wipe it out and he fails. With the flood. Cain killing Abel. The flood. The Tower of Babel. Satan's trying to bring God's holiness to destroy his own people. To stop the messianic seed. That he comes so close. Pharaoh's killing babies. And now and if we're going to pick up tomorrow with Jesus. And baby Jesus is finally born. It all converges. And Jesus comes. And the king uh, the, leading the area, Herod, uh, the tetrarch of, of uh, Rome. What does he try to immediately try to do when baby Jesus is born? Kill all the babies. Who do you think's behind that? <coughs> you see, when you know Satan's big picture plan, his kingdom, world government, new world order, when you know his personal plan, we'll talk more about that, to blind our minds, to deceive us, to lie to us, to discourage us, to destroy us. We're not ignorant of his devices. We don't have to fear him, but it's amazing. Last night I had a dream, a horrible dream after a horrible dream after a horrible dream. And tonight I'm stopped on the highway to pull in here. I get rear-ended pretty hard. It's a bad it's a spiritual battle. Isn't it great to know he hates us? But you know what's greater than know? He's defeating. The greater is he that is in us than he is in the world. Amen. We're in a battle. It's a battle that we win. He was defeated He went along the way over and over again. But he hasn't given up. We're going to see the birth of Jesus tomorrow and his battle and the launching of the church. We're going to go through the whole history of the church. What is Satan trying to do? It would be fantastic. With, and when you get the whole picture done, you'll see where we are. It's all about Jesus in the Old Testament. He will come. Of the seed of Abraham. Of the tribe of Judah. Of the lineage of King David. Michael 5, 5, uh, 20, born in Bethlehem. Of a virgin, Isaiah 7. All the details were given. They all converge in Jesus. Tomorrow we'll pick up where it all will converge again for the second end. The world will start. Oh my. Isn't it awesome <coughs> to understand what the heck's going on? Aren't you glad you don't have to rise and fall on what Hillary did and, and, and Donald said? Aren't you glad we're above all that? You know? God sits in heaven and laughs. When Israel was on the bottom, God was still on top. His kingdom is coming. His will will be done. And here we are. You've learned so much Bible in the last couple of weeks, few weeks, haven't you? Connecting the dots. Now you have got eternal life. You're a bunch of spiritual relatives. Keep your eye on some of them. That guy in the back row is kind of crazy. <laughs> Purple shirt guy, yeah, bar can. There's a lot of them around here. You gotta watch out for The crazy people. They want the whole world to get saved. They want everybody to go to heaven. She's not. She's got, they already got strikes against you. She's got Jesus now. And you're on the way to you, sister. I'm so proud of you. I'm gonna get a picture of you. Um, out of time. QA, Susie, come on up. Questions? How does this fit in? How does that fit in? And obviously, I've left out a lot of details. Is it starting to come alive to you? 
we're going to wrap it up. We'll get, we'll get faster tomorrow night. Everybody tired? Moses died where up on Mount? Where did Moses die up on Mount? Nebo. Let's pray. Heads and eyes are closed.